G'day, Steve Swain here. I'm just going to briefly show you how I use an app called Circular Studio for Mac to convert a 360 equirectangular into a tiny planet. It's uh, got a lot of interesting features and I think um, for those with a Mac it's well worth a look. I'll run the app, Circular Studio. Loads pretty fast, it's pretty simple. Uh, pretty obvious interface, doesn't require a great deal of explanation. Uh, if you want to find it on the internet, it's called Circular Studio, the company that makes it Brain Fever Media. Okay, go. So, uh, first of all, you want to load in a photograph you're going to use, and I'll just choose this one, Night Shot. First thing you get is a window where you can crop the image if you wish. Now this is really applicable if you're using a non-360 as your base image because um, it will also turn ordinary photographs into 360s in a folks sort of way. But for the purpose of a full 360 you just accept it as it is straight away go crop. You then click on the little button over to the right. You can see this there. It uh, removes the faded overlap that the photo automatically gets put on to try and hide the fact that it's got a seam line. Of course 360 doesn't have a seam line. We'll just maximize so we can see it better. Rightio, so there's my 360, a standard looking straight down a uh, tiny planet. First slide is you've got to rotate so you can put your area of most interest at the top which uh, might be say like that. This is the moon there, so if you're going to zoom in, you probably want to keep that in the shot. You've got invert, which will turn it into a tunnel, the exact opposite. And you've got to decide which of the two is the more interesting looking image. Do you prefer that, or do you prefer that as a basis for further tweaking? You've got the possibility to add in interesting extra features, like you can plop a range of different effects in the center to hide the tripod if you don't want to get rid of the tripod out of your shot. Um, an interesting one is a compass rose, which you can actually then, if you know where north is, you can orient it so it points to where north was in reality. And yeah, there's a bunch of other effects you can, you can use. Uh, you can also, if it's a daytime shot or even at night, you could add, for example, I could add uh, stars to my shot. Now, there weren't any, but you can fake it by putting some in. Some more. There's star trail, which is an even funkier sort of effect, but I've got the moon and the moon's not trailing, so a bit of a giveaway but on a night where it's uh, cloudy and you want to change things a bit it saves you the trouble of doing your mega long exposure you can just get it from the app it's sort of cheating a bit it's also got other funky sky effects you can add in or you can put clouds in if you want to make it a strange looking sunset effect so it's quite a good app in terms of having lots of quirky things you can do to your image to create a uh, picture of interest. You can also add in lens flare um, if you wanted to turn the moon into something a bit more different looking. You could make it a sort of a night sun look um, or you could give it one of those sort of strange night moon looks. So yeah, you can do various effects um, you've also got sort of novelty sky objects, you can add in hot air balloons, you can make the moon a real moon, and then of course you can scale it down and plop it over the top. The theta makes it a bit blobby looking, um, this gives you a chance to Of course, it doesn't move when you zoom in. So. 
but you can control Z undo the change. So I'll get rid of that effect anyway. So that's the uh, sort of the fun aspects you've got. You can also add in color filters to change the look of the image, or you can do this sort of thing in post work. You can make it black and white. There's a whole bunch of different effects you can do. And you can add in some textures like grain, dust effects, sort of spots on the lens to simulate raindrops or dust or whatever. It just adds a bit of interest. They might work better in a daytime blue sky than at night. So we'll go back to the basic image. Um, so you can basically rotate it to suit where you want up to appear. Of course, later on, you can do 90 degree rotations if you change your mind about what you want uppermost. Um, but here you've sort of got all those interesting reflections, the bridge and the people. Um, and you've got to decide what's up and what's down. And also zooming in. Uh, you can get rid of the moon and zoom right in on everything else, but the moon's part of the shot. And it's got its reflection in the water there. So I would not go too much because you crowd the moon. It doesn't look good unless it's in the frame a bit, bit about there. You've also got the X and Y axes. You can subtly adjust the center of the image. Now, you might want to emphasize the size of that building by making it look larger, or you might want to go entirely the opposite direction and emphasize the water reflections on the far side. You then lose the moon, but that's an option. Um, in the other plane, up and down, you can make the buildings look smaller, or you can go right to the extreme end and make the buildings look larger. It's up to you what you want to do. Um, you can also shrink and stretch the image. These are more applicable if you're using a non-360 and you want to make it look a bit better. And then you've got some special effects. Melt will sort of, as you can see, do a quirky uh, effect on your shot. Blocks will fracture it, make it look a bit like some modern, modern artwork. Uh, spiral will rotate the middle in one way and the out a different way. It's quite intriguing. You just do it a bit and it, it makes quite an interesting effect. And tunnel will create a new image inside and you can keep doing that which again can make for an interesting effect. You could say go that far and then zoom it in. But I'm not going to use any of those. So I'll zoom back out to have the moon showing and inverting it, turning it into a rabbit hole. Um, you can probably about like that would be better. Zoom in a bit more. And it's a question of what you prefer. Do you prefer a rabbit hole or a tiny planet look? Um, once you've, you're happy with what you've got, you just save it. It'll save back into the directory where the 360 was as a PNG, JPEG or TIFF. I prefer to save it as a PNG and do some color adjustment in Adobe Lightroom afterwards. So I just TP for Tiny Planet on the end and click Save. And it's as simple as that. It's a clever little app. Um, I'll just briefly show you. Um, you can use a standard photograph that's not a 360. This one, for example, is about 150 degrees of the horizon, so a fraction of a normal 360. Uh, just to show you what it does when you get an image that's not a 360. So we take that in and it's got the hard edge if you don't if you apply that checkbox. If you don't, it does a reasonable job of blending it in. You can't really see where it was. This is where you can um, use these to adjust the appearance of it a bit if you want, make it look more circular. Um, you can then adjust 
where the center is, you can rotate it. Something like that, say, and maybe like that, and then zoom it in. So a non 360 image can still produce a pretty funky tiny planet look. So this program has extra flexibility like that. I've seen a guy demonstrate on um, on YouTube over 20 minutes how he did this using uh, Adobe Photoshop. But you can see in this app you can do it in a fraction of that time. So it's pretty neat as well for non 360. So if you've got a load of panoramas you took way back 20 years ago with a normal camera that have no hope of being a proper 360, you can still make them into tiny planets. So this app has that dual functionality. Uh, it's quite a good little app. Okay, so the tiny planet images that were just created from the 360s have now been loaded into the Adobe Lightroom library. And the final little bit of this, I just want to briefly show you that because these are no longer equirectangular, nothing we do will be destructive in terms of mangling the seam line because there isn't a seam line anymore. So we can apply absolutely any effect we like to these images to enhance their appearance. Um, so going into develop module, um, I've got literally hundreds of presets which I've acquired from all over the internet um, that do all kinds of various things. You can apply absolutely any preset you like to this image without having a particularly adverse effect on it uh, to enhance it, basically. Um, something like this uh, might benefit from a much higher uh, contrast look, something maybe like that. But it's easy to do, and I just briefly wanted to show you that. Um, if I pick a different image to toy with, say this one of the gun, it's quite flat in the middle, quite dark, because it was a bright uh, sky but it was in deep shadow there so it doesn't have any pop it's got no pizzazz at all and I've got a bunch of my favorite presets here some of them are like this one will bang make that image suddenly pop and look way better it's a bit too blue for my taste so again you might want to crank the yellow up a bit um, and the other thing you might want to do is vignette it, make the outside of the sky darker, which enhances the look of the, the uh, focus being on the actual center of the image. So just doing that made a big difference. If I um, just jump back to the adjacent image, you can see how flat that looks versus this. So that's the sort of thing you can do once you're in Tiny Planet. All of those obviously would drastically mangle a normal 360 because of the seam line issue when viewing it in a 360 app. And this is now ready to stick on Instagram and impress all of your friends. Um, okay, thanks for watching. Bye.